Hello and uh, welcome to the 108 Harley Street CPD snippets again. Um, these are, for those of you who haven't met us and haven't been watching our shows, these are short talks lasting 20 minutes and we're going to use 12 slides talking about one single topic amongst a number of uh, medical areas, specialties within our group. And uh, we do appreciate feedback. Please send us any recommendations for future topics as well. In each talk, there's a key slide of the main message to take home. Uh, today's talk is about pruritus ani or anal itching. Um, and I hope this will be nice and lighthearted and entertaining. Uh, certainly is a condition as a colorectal surgeon we encountered frequently and as one very s famous colorectal surgeon John Golliger wrote it is not a, a condition that uh, is difficult to get uh, that's very easy to uh, become enthusiastic about having said that I do find it extremely in uh, interesting because there is a good a bit of good old-fashioned medicine going on you need to take a good history and examine the patients and often the diagnosis is there now, pruritus ani, the first thing to say is, is this is a symptom, not a diagnosis. And it's an extremely unpleasant cutaneous sensation uh, with uh, itching and burning feeling and soreness. And as you can see from my picture on the right hand side, it does drive patients potty, absolutely mad they go with this itching. Um, and, and they can go on for days and weeks and months and years, scratching and itching at night especially, and they really don't sleep and they become quite stressed. It's so extremely common and much more common with, amongst men uh, in middle ages up to the older age groups. And there is a spectrum of disease, as you know, from the very mild uh, bit of sore bottom to the severe intractable one. And we'll talk about treatment of these shortly. Now, uh, I did mention it's a symptom. So the underlying etiology uh, is uh, varied and you can have a significant proportion of patients varied uh, reports from 25 to 70% of idiopathic uh, pruritus ani. Uh, as you can see, nobody really quite knows how common this is, but there's a very wide range, but clearly it's quite common where there is no underlying pathology found. And this is the one that we will often see, you will see in your general practice, and uh, it is a real annoying condition. It has a relapsing nature, so the treatment has to be long-term often, and patients need to be told this and need to have their expectations adjusted quite early on that they're in for the long haul, I'm afraid. Uh, there are a number of uh, related or uh, aspects which are uh, uh, sort of coexist, and these are behavioral, um, overzealous cleaning, so detergent perfumes seem to be uh, uh, important with some group, subgroup. Stress and anxiety, as you mentioned, does seem to be a uh, coexisting problem. We don't know which is chicken, which is egg. And dietary factors, as you can see, you can see why it's such an annoying, irritating condition. If you can't have your caffeine or your chocolate or your beer or any spicy foods, then uh, and you're itching and scratching, what can you do? So um, a group of patients, a uh, subgroup will have soiling and there is some evidence that in these patients there is a, a sphincter dysfunction, a bit of uh, exaggerated rectal and a reflex. They tend to relax more profoundly, especially at night, soil resulting in a bit of an uh, adult form of a nappy rash around the anus and they keep scratching and itching and this cycle perpetuates itself. Um, if there is an idiopathic group, the other big subgroup is the secondary pruritus ani, and these are a vast number of underlying etiologies for these. And I would divide, subdivide them very uh, sort of uh, uh, broadly to infective and non-infective groups, but you can divide them as you like. Uh, and we will go through some of the ones which are relevant to a colorectal surgeon and the others, of course, you are aware of yourselves. But there's a vast number of fungal, bacterial, parasitic infections, viral infections uh, and non-infective causes, as you can see, are uh, anorectal conditions, which you will go through, some neoplastic causes, which must be excluded and treated and dermatological subgroup, which are clearly very important. There again is a subgroup of patients who have uh, psychological aspects, uh, whether it's a primary cause is really not known. And obviously patients who've got systemic disease, liver disease and jaundice and such, who have a generalized pruritic condition, might well present with pruritus ani. Uh, drugs do cause it, so one has to be aware of, and hence a good history taking is very important pruritus ani. 
Now, uh, as infections go, for a colorectal surgeon, uh, I want to dwell a little bit on the uh, viral infection. This is human papillomavirus, and it can present with, from very mild disease of a couple of little eruptions to this sort of confluent, extensive perianal eruption. Um, and the uh, differential diagnosis, as you can see, there is a number of other molluscum congeneration, hypertrophic anal papilla, condyloma lata. These are uh, uh, things to be aware of. But uh, human papillomavirus is extremely common. Uh, 30 to 50 percent of sexually active adults are thought to have uh, the infection, and uh, this rises to 70 percent or more for male homosexuals, men who have sex with other men. If there's HIV positive, the infection rate seems to be huge, over 90 percent. It's, uh, it's very, uh, there's very good cures available. Uh, treatment can be with simple topical immunotherapy, imiquimod, um, cryotherapy, podophylline and interferon. Also, of course, uh, uh, surgery. And, and for something as extensive as the one on the right-hand side, surgery is extremely capable of managing these, uh, and in particular, intra-anal uh, problems. Um, we, we, must, uh, we must also be aware that vaccination exists and uh, uh, even patients who have already papillomavirus can be vaccinated and it's very effective. Uh, under an general anesthetic uh, for a colorectal surgeon, this is quite a relaxing operation. Uh, you infiltrate, as you can see, with local anesthetic and adrenaline. Once the skin is blanched on the second and middle picture on the bottom and gone white, you know you've got a nice bit of local anesthetic and you can literally uh, scissor excises epidermally. These are the viruses on a sort of superficial epidermal level. It doesn't involve the full thickness of the dermis. So it doesn't matter how extensive it is, you can leave this raw sort of a graze, friction burn looking wound at the end and they heal beautifully well with no stricturing or scarring but uh, with varying degrees of discomfort and pain. It's not desperately painful, but it can be. As far as anorectal causes of pruritus any are concerned, uh, this poor old hemorrhoid, as we had uh, in our previous talk, is, seems to be the blame for everything, is the victim. Every other symptom, is every other problem is caused by it. But, but when you do have a hemorrhoid, which is external, in particular one on this picture, where there is a mucosal um, uh, protrusion, as you can see, sort of a significant shiny mucosal ectropion or prolapse, then they do weep and discharge mucoid feculent bacteria uh, fluid which sits on the skin and causes a little local irritation and uh, and and itch inside each scratch cycle develops. So hemorrhoids can be the cause of pruritus any, but be cautious in treating doing major significant hemorrhoid surgery for purely pruritus unless there's good reason. Um, anal fissures typically cause pain, bleeding. This is the subject of our next talk in a month's time. Uh, but anal fissures that present in, in this particular scenario where the patient has a very dry uh, sort of eczematous skin and the skin is fissuring, uh, in these circumstances they do present with itching and sometimes burning itching sensations. Sepsis, anal fistula, there's one, uh, as you can see, the skin around it is red and angry. There's been discharge from the external opening where the probe is poking out of. And this discharge, again, contains bacteria, contains feculent material, and it irritates the skin, causes itching. Anal wart, we've already discussed, and this is a typical, uh, more minor sort of eruption. And of course, anal and rectal tumors, uh, more in particular, anal uh, tumors. These are usually relatively easy to uh, to diagnose by just simply looking at them because they have, a very, as you can see, very irregular edges, rolled up, thickened edges, quite an irregular ulcer, and they're extremely painful usually. Chronic diarrheal conditions, uh, inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's and colitis. So it is important to diagnose patients uh, uh, by not just examination in clinic, but sometimes investigation of the colon and rectum higher up if you can't immediately see a cause for the pruritus any. So we do uh, often carry out, especially in a middle-aged man uh, or woman, uh, a colonoscopy or a flexible sigmoidoscopy to exclude other underlying cause. Uh, anal cancer is something I wanted to mention in a quick slide. Um, it can present in a number of ways. You saw the overt cancer ulcerating lesions in the previous slides, but this is anal intraepithelial neoplasia, or AIN, uh, which can present in a number of uh, morphological uh, types. So there's Bowen's types, which is sort of a, uh, appear as a red-brown sort of uh, moles around the bum. Be cautious of those. Um, leukoplakic, which is this white, uh, coarse, uh, 
uh, plaques of uh, tissue with hard rolled up edges. Uh, these are not cancers, these are pre-cancerous stages, depending on the dysplastic layers, depth of dysplasia, they're classified between one and three, and they are easily treated. They're not cancers of the NS, but they can theoretically progress. Erythroplatic on the right, sort of the strawberry colored red and white patches, and of course the verrucous, the warty looking, looks like anal warts, but actually there's an underlying e anal intraepithelial neoplasm in there. So histology is crucial on these. When you see these kind of plaques and things, you remove them, you biopsy them, and if there is AIN or significant AIN, you can do a, a circumferential mapping biopsies. When you do multiple biopsies, and uh, on a picture uh, which you send to the pathologist and they can tell you where dysplasia is. And you can guide yourself by uh, using high uh, resolution anoscopy or acetic acid. Um, so uh, that's the uh, colorectal causes. Dermatological cause of pruritus any, well, these are multitude and the common things happen commonly. Eczema and psoriasis do affect the skin creases everywhere, including the natal cleft, as you can see on the right. And uh, uh, these conditions obviously are treated uh, in conjunction with a dermatologist, uh, but they treat it in their own way. Lichen planus is an autoimmune phenomenon of the skin, seems to affect uh, that part of the anatomy, the, the groin and the female and male genital area. Um, lichen simplex is common. Uh, lichen sclerosis is a really difficult uh, condition to treat, almost incurable sometimes with very heavily fibrotic uh, coarse thickening of the skin, which can cause significant deformity. And of course, the common atop atopies and allergies and such, and intertrigo. Uh, remember agents, detergents, latex, lanolin, soaps, parabens, preservatives. So contact irritant dermatitis. Patients have often used a lot of over-the-counter medications by the stages see us. They get given a whole bunch more to use, and these are all helping perpetuate the problem. So. Let's, we need to be quite cautious in giving them over-the-counter medication. They contain a lot of unnecessary products, which in the susceptible individual actually makes the problem worse, including antibiotics topically and antifungal agents. So, pruritus any is a symptom, and the diagnosis once reached, we treat the cause. It's simple. Uh, however, uh, a large proportion fall between ourselves and dermatologists, and we do like a dermatological opinion in a number of cases. And I'm very lucky to have a, two very good dermatologists here on site, in fact, three now, and I can uh, access them for help when it's obvious that it's a dermatosis and not a colorectal cause. Uh, we will discuss idiopathic pruritus any uh, very quickly because this is something which is very common and the treatment is really is, uh, as you can see, uh, quite a multimodal treatment. There are general measures and specific treatments. The general measures are becoming obvious given the talk I've just given. Uh, you must exclude any underlying anal pathology, of course, a fissure or a fistula, etc. But once you've excluded, you know it's truly idiopathic. Um, address the diet. If, is the patient on 10 cups of double espresso or uh, whatever else these days they drink, which has got triple shots of uh, coffee or whatever in it, in which case you might want to tell them to reduce that. Uh, beers, chocolate, etc. Uh, uh, patients are not going to like you for it, but it is important to have a little history of what they're eating and drinking. And uh, in those patients who, you, when you see the clinic, when you do a little wipe and you can see a bit of staining and soiling and a bit of discharge on the skin, you do want to get them to have a good, careful skincare, well, appropriate uh, products. You want them to avoid a brazy of repeated multiple wipes. Patients are overzealously washing with water and soap must stop doing so. And you need to wash with something quite strongly emollient, quite strongly oily, such as epidermal ointment, which is my favorite. Uh, dermal is very good, but dermal has chlorhexidine and it itself as an an local uh, sort of uh, antibacterial agent can cause irritation of the skin. So be, uh, I stick with a simple stop epiderm or aqueous cream is very good for washers. Uh, and then try them with a simple barrier protection to stop this soiling. Once they've had a good wash, the, clean, the skin is clean. Immediately apply uh, zinc-based uh, or titanium-based barrier creams, uh, which are freely available in any uh, mother care or any boots or any other uh, chemist uh, in a baby section. These are very good at protecting skin from being soiled and itch and irritation. And as we discussed, stop the over-the-counter medication, in particular those containing local anesthetics, which are, uh, after a period of time, themselves sensitize the skin. 
often the patients have very mild symptoms and having used a number of products over time they've made it much worse because it gives them this soothing effect immediately they feel better with it and they keep using it but over time they're exacerbating the problem developing this uh, irritant dermatitis problem as far as specific treatment is concerned, sure, uh, once we know it's idiopathic and there's no underlying fungal or other infection, I do give them a short course of a potent steroid. And again, I tend to favor ointments rather than creams. Ointments are simple, oil-based, paraffin-based, as opposed to creams, which are a number of preservatives and uh, vehicles uh, to uh, make them lovely and uh, uh, in, uh, soothing, but they, they are complex products as opposed to ointment. As we discussed, joint care dermatologist, certainly if there is a difficult problem. And uh, I've used very uh, effectively a, a very sedating antihistamine, hydroxyzine, which also had anticholinergic side effects. So it dries those wet, moist skins, but also it puts them to sleep. So they stop scratching at night. Uh, capsaicin I've never used. It's the, uh, the extract of chili. And in a dilute form, it's said to be very effective in stopping the itching. It causes initial burn and then it stops the itching. So uh, it seems a bit uh, dr drastic, but uh, the literature does talk about it. I've never had, I have no experience of it. But antacrolimus I have used on a number of occasions. This is the immunosuppressant drug, uh, of course, in a uh, cream format. It's called Potopic. comes in two uh, dilutions and it is used in very, very rare occasions. Maybe in 20 years, I've used it five, six times. Methylene blue tattoo, I'll come to in a minute, and of course, psychological help. Now, methylene blue tattoo, uh, this is the sort of patient you want to get to methylene blue tattooing. Uh, this is a patient who's had years and years of sore, itchy bottom to the point where he decided he will tattoo himself and as a matter of protest. Um, methylene blue uh, injection intradermally does seem to work extremely well, but it is something to be very cautiously used by a specialist who has experience. I have used it perhaps 15 times in my career and uh, injection of methylene blue combination with some steroid and local anesthetic intradermally, it blue tattoos the skin so they need to be worn and it's permanently blue and it's very bright blue. And uh, it is repeatable, it's effective, it does seem to uh, kill off the superficial nerves, causes topical anesthesia, and is very effective, can be repeated. Beware of very rare but very severe complications, and I've had all of these. I've had a patient with severe edema, the scrotum swelled up, the skin shed necrotic, and he had some transit fecal incontinence, but he was delighted after two weeks and all settled down. His itching had stopped, uh, and he managed to sleep. He hadn't slept for two years. So it is very good, but has to be done by somebody who knows what they're doing. So in conclusion, a very common, extremely unpleasant relapsing symptom. It does vary in spectrum and you must find the underlying cause if there is one and treat it. If it's a dermatological problem, do speak to a dermatological colleague. You can start straight steroids yourself and if things are not settling, do refer on. And of course, uh, we've discussed the, the more uh, intractable cases where we can use things like methylene blue and tacrolimus and capsaicin. These are specialist treatments, very infrequently used, but good to know, uh, good to have in the armamentarium for those unbelievably difficult intractable cases. Anticholinergic uh, are very useful. Um, uh, sedating antihistamines are very good. Atarax or hydroxine is very good. Uh, and uh, uh, but the mainstay is emollients and more emollients. Patients need to know, they need to wash with the emollients, must keep the skin clean, but not use soap, detergents, water, all of which exacerbate the problem and avoid over-the-counter medications, over-the-counter wet wipes, adult wipes and such. Baby wipes are okay for intermittent occasional usage. Thank you very much.